Well, hello everyone. This is Bernard Dumont with Catholic Vitality 360. We want to welcome you to the broadcast of The Circle, where every month we pick a topic uh, that is vital to Catholic parish and school advancement or vitality, and we have a discussion about it, and we share with you tips and strategies on how to implement this in your own situation. We want to discuss today this very important topic that is being presented and it is the title beyond social media creating and implementing an effective catholic school marketing plan i am bernard dumont so happy to be with you this morning and if you're joining us from different places this morning good morning good evening good afternoon Wherever you may be, this is a service we provide from Catholic Vitality 360, along with our blog and other important strategies that can help you to become more effective in your work. As always, we begin our broadcast with an opening prayer. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us remember that we're in the holy presence of God. Dear Lord, we thank you for all those gathered here. We thank you for all the blessings that we've received in our life. We thank you for the struggles and the challenges that come our way, that they may be instructive to our Catholic faith and to those that we serve. We ask you to bless all of our faculty and staff and clergy and those who are laboring in the ministry of Catholic education. We ask you to give us wisdom and hope and vitality as we proceed, as we teach, as we bring people closer to our Catholic faith. For this we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Once again, thank you for being with us this morning. We're so happy to be offering this as what we call the Vitality Collective, the Vitality 360 Collective. And this is a place for all of us to learn, to share, to grow, to collaborate, and to discover. If you go to our website at catholicvitality360.com, you'll find a variety of different resources. Uh, every month or so, we write blogs on these topics. We have our Zoom cast, we have social media, we do workshops for Catholic schools and parishes, and we're also in partnerships with a number of parishes and schools on a uh, variety, once again, of uh, partnership opportunities, whether it is uh, strategic visioning, uh, marketing, enrollment, and a number of other areas, feasibility studies that can help you to learn and grow. So let's jump in on getting ready to create and implement a marketing plan. These are some initial thoughts that I wanted to share in terms of getting ready to implement your plans. We often teach that uh, there is a formula for success, and it's right here on the screen, and it is three letters, and it is E plus R equal O. And it means really that we are then presented each and every day with a series of events that take place, whether it's in the school or the parish or in our job or in our office or in our department. There are a series of events that take place every day. What's most important is our response to those events that will then produce a desired outcome. So it's not what happens to us, but it's what we do with what happens to us. And the question in our profession of, of Catholic vitality and advancement and development is, are we ready for these events to take place? Not so much what you plan for, but more importantly, what you haven't planned for, that you begin to think about that in terms of a response to create a desired outcome. So we often say that you must find the truth. There's no blaming. There's no complaining. We find the best options. We build the mission of our parish and school to bring people closer to Christ, to their Catholic faith. It promotes vitality, and we then get to work. So think about this as we encounter the, the numerous activities that take place. What is our response to these? 
What is our response to a full calendar? What's our response to a, a difficult situation? What's our response to something we haven't planned for? What's our response to someone not doing their job? What's our response to uh, a complaint or negativity? What's our response to uh, needing a marketing plan like this or, and how to implement that? So it's often not what happens to us but how we respond to it that makes all the difference. So if you need a marketing plan, uh, the response is let's create one and then certainly implement one. And the desired outcome is a, a, a strategic uh, and deliberate and intentional plan to send messages and touch points out that will engage people in the life of our school. We believe the response to this in our school and our parish is this concept of vitality. And this is our goal. Uh, the creation and integration of key components and systems that contribute to the growth, promotion, and sustainability of the school and parish in all areas. We can measure vitality and innovation is celebrated and all efforts support this priority. So the language here is so important because Every activity, every uh, process begins with a thought, okay? Thoughts become language, language becomes processes and activities. So let's begin to think about and use the word vitality. Uh, what do we want to be? We want to be a school of vitality. We want to be a parish of vitality. We want to think about growth, sustainability, quality in all areas of the school and the parish. We have thought quite a lot about this at Catholic Vitality 360. It's in our name. It's what we share with schools and parishes. And these are the seven circles of Catholic vitality for schools. There's also a companion to this for parishes and also for dioceses. And we want you to begin thinking about this. And in a number of our partnership schools, we're developing leadership teams and systems around each of these seven circles. And so as we think about this, and I have a copy here in front of me, you can get a copy of this if you'd like. This is also on our website at catholicvitality360.com, where you can fill out the scorecard, as you see here, and also get your score uh, live and uh, in real time, and you can share that with your team. We recommend that you fill this out as a school team or a leadership team three times a year in uh, September, in January, and June, and compare your scores. And so there is visionary leadership, there is Catholic values and mission, there's education and academics, there is communication and marketing, which is our topic today, there is enrollment and growth, there is uh, student life, and there is uh, financial viability. Okay, these are the seven areas that we evaluate consistently for every Catholic school. The scorecard then invites you to look at each area, there's seven areas, and uh, rate each area a one to four. One is not evident, two is emerging, uh, three it's operational in our school, or four it's highly functional. And then you add all those up at the bottom and you can get a sense of where you are. You're a red school, a yellow school, or a green school. And then that'll give you some sense of, of where you're going. You would complete this individually and then bring it to the team. And then you would develop a framework for strategy and success around this. We're very proud of this and we use it quite a bit in our partnership work. And uh, a lot of schools have called us, uh, especially in the last year or so, to uh, complement their visioning process or their accreditation process. And it can certainly uh, help you to evaluate where your school is. So based on the topic today, which is to create and implement a marketing plan, let's look at this for a moment and let's apply this to your school. Okay, so think about your school right now. And this is part of the scorecard. So there's seven areas. And as I said, there's a, a rating of each one, a one, two, three, or four. One is the lowest, of course. Four is the highest, which means it's operational and it's functioning, highly functioning. Four is highly functioning. One, it doesn't exist. And so let's, let's do a quick evaluation of what you believe is the current state of marketing in your school. 
So the first one is, do you have a clear branding process and clear uh, images in place and, and an understanding of your advantages, your competitive advantages and value proposition? Is that a one? Is that a two, three or a four? Do you have an existing logo, a new logo in the last five, 10 years that's functioning well, that's digital, that is, is uh, out in the community, it's on uh, your website and all your swag items and all of your uh, promotional items, your logo is prominent uh, in your marketing plan. There's a good website and you're active on social media. Uh, that's a one, two, three or four. Four, of course, is highly functioning. One is it doesn't exist. Uh, the third one here is, do you have a marketing committee and are they being formed, meaning that are they being in serviced and trained to understand Catholic school marketing? Catholic school marketing is a little different than business marketing or corporate marketing uh, because it's a very specific message. It is part of the ministry of the Catholic Church and getting students to heaven. And so what are we trying to say? I'm going to talk about in this, in this piece here today on branding statements, actually words and phrases that are going to describe yourself as a Catholic school. And then do you have a marketing plan with implementation, uh, weekly implementation, not, well, we'll get to it later or uh, we'll get to it when this week passes or next month or whatever. There is a annual plan. The four seasons of Catholic school marketing, which I'll show you, there is a monthly plan and a weekly plan for marketing, okay, with people responsible and messaging and touch points that are going out uh, daily, certainly weekly. Is that a one, two, three, or four in your estimation? And then there's a marketing budget finally, and then there's ongoing evaluation. You should be evaluating your marketing efforts consistently, whether it's weekly or whether it is uh, monthly, uh, you know, getting metrics back, talking to people, is it working, is it not working, what do people respond to, click points, uh, you know, likes, all of that, metrics that give you a sense of, is this messaging connecting with people? So this is the marketing portion of our scorecard, and uh, it does work well in terms of ongoing uh, assessment. All right. So a little definition here of effective marketing, and it is a process. It is systematic. It's comprehensive. It's well executed, and it falls under the advancement or development process. So it falls under your advancement office, your development office, and it's designed to actively communicate, promote, and advance the school's mission, purpose, values, vision, and market advantages, right? You're telling stories, and it's also part of enrollment management. There is an enrollment management plan, there's a marketing communication plan, and you position the school for growth and ongoing vitality. It is very much connected to enrollment. And we at Catholic Vitality 360 say that enrollment is everything, and everything is enrollment. Let me say it again. Enrollment is everything and everything is enrollment. And marketing is one of the pillars of enrollment. If people don't know about your school and all of its advantages, they'll never enroll or come to the open house or schedule a tour. And so part of marketing is to support enrollment, okay? Marketing and then enrollment is a very specific call to action uh, come to the open house, come to the tour, look at our school, enroll today. You know, Catholic Schools Week is coming up at the end of January. So one of the things you should be preparing for right now, this is, this is November, November 15th to be exact, and we need a plan for Catholic Schools Week. Starts on Sunday and it goes throughout the last week of January into early February. This is prime marketing time, okay? We have a budget, we pull out all the stops, we move it forward, we tell the story, we get ready for it, we have our raving fans ready to go, we go to the parish, we go to church, churches, we go to mass, we get things out. This is a very specific time of the year. And so what is our marketing disposition? The school mission certainly is paramount. So as we begin to think about a marketing plan, you want to think about the mission of the school. 
it is to educate, but it's also to prepare these children to get to heaven morally, spiritually, academically. Mind, body, and spirit is our school mission. And so much of our mission is our Catholic faith. We are a Catholic school, an authentically Catholic school. We promote Catholicism. We share our faith. We learn about the faith. We teach students about the faith. We, we want to move them into their adolescence and adulthood and college, you know, and on through their life with an excellent foundation of being a good Catholic and a, a foundation for their spiritual life. So we have a marketing plan and strategy that, that begins with some questions. What do we do at our Catholic school? Who do we do it for? What's the way that we do it and why do we do it? So it's the what, who, the way, and the why. Begin to think about those questions. What are we about? Who do we serve? You know, the way we do things and why we do it, right? And so that begins to form the foundation of a marketing plan and strategy. And we are calling these in, in, in our process here, uh, these become branding statements. And I'll show you how to write those. The branding statements are uh, of which every marketing strategy is built upon. And we say, how does this strategy connect to one of our branding statements? And it could be what we do in our Catholic school, who we serve in our Catholic school, the way we do things in our Catholic school, and why we do it. And so begin to put together some words and phrases, right? Understand the school's mission and put together some words and phrases on a marketing strategy. This is a graphic that we use in our training and in our partnerships that gives you the components of effective Catholic school marketing and communication. And I just want to share this with you, uh, and I'll be happy to send it to you. This, this is something that you can begin to share uh, as part of your training for a marketing committee or for your faculty and staff. You know, put this in, in their mailboxes. Put this, you know, in a packet. Put this uh, in, in a presentation format for the uh, school advisory council. But you need, you need these eight or so elements in place for it to be successful. The first thing is you need to have commitment from your leaders. And this is your pastor, your principal, your advisory council, faculty, and staff. Okay? Let me say it again. Leadership in a Catholic school is uh, the pastor, the clergy, your principal, your faculty and staff, your school advisory council. All of those people are in leadership positions. The second thing here as we go around the circle clockwise is to be a school of excellence. And I've said this many times in our workshops and, and partnerships that it's very difficult to market a poor school or a school that is, uh, is, is struggling in terms of vitality. And so you know, there, there needs to be ongoing efforts, daily efforts to be a school of excellence and distinction. You know, and what is unique about our school? What is distinctive about our Catholic school? You know, parents are making decisions about enrollment and they want to know what's different about you or what you do very well or what you do differently than other Catholic schools. You know, parents are shopping around every day and they look at websites and they look at your uh, materials and they may go on a tour and they're, they're trying to, to make sense of what is unique about your school what you do differently. And so you need to articulate that. We also say here, as we move through it, understand the marketplace, what's going on in your uh, educational marketplace with private schools, with public schools, with new schools, with uh, the homeschool market. Who are you competing with in terms of educational decisions? And then articulate your unique difference. That's part of the marketing plan. I'm going to show you how to create these branding statements and everything is sort of lifted and builds from there. Uh, we have an established marketing team. I recommend this as a strategy that uh, you not, not a large group, but somewhere between five and six, seven people that you can meet with every month. And uh, you have parents and alumni that have great gifts in this area. 
And some of them run marketing firms, some of them have marketing experience, some of them run their own businesses, and invite them, right? Invite them to join you, to give advice, to, to help you create the plan, to help you create your raving marketing, uh, raving fan marketing plan, and they can really help you to spread the word and, and be a wonderful resource. So uh, number one, begin to look at uh, the marketplace, uh, what's your unique difference? Create these branding statements, and then we're we'll moving to the marketing team. And then executing your monthly marketing game plan. I'll show you in a moment in this in this session uh, the four seasons of Catholic school marketing. It's a handout much like this. I can send it to you. I've presented this through NCEA and other workshops. And it's a wonderful resource to organize your marketing plan over the course of of the academic year and then evaluate and expect success. So this is a very important graphic in terms of uh, getting ready and putting these pieces in place for an effective marketing uh, plan. We also know that uh, marketing should be strategic, intentional, and deliberate. It is not, uh, you know, we're going to get to it at some point or it's some, it's an afterthought. Uh, this is top of mind every single day. It takes into account all these items here in the yellow box, the school mission, there's clear messaging. We know the target audiences. We know the best outlets to reach them. We know the platforms to reach them. We know when to do it. There's a lot of uh, analytics on the timing of social media or the timing of different strategies, time of the year, and all of that. Uh, we're going to learn about that as we move through this marketing process. We need to understand our reputation and image, and we need to understand the law of attraction, which is we want to invite people. People will, will be attracted to us because we have a strong and effective message, right? The law of attraction. Uh, we want to be attractive in order to attract others. Let me say that again. We want to be attractive in order to attract others. And what are the most attractive features of your Catholic school? So here are some key questions. And uh, I do want to mention that these uh, these broadcasts are also recorded and on our YouTube channel under Catholic Vitality 360. And so you can go there and view the recorded version of this and, uh, you know, have a session with your leaders and, and play the video. Uh, it's about an hour long, as you, as you know, and you can begin to, or take pieces and parts of it and begin to to, to put up these questions and, and pause it here. And this can be a, a little bit of a listening session or a roundtable discussion. And so first question is, what is your mission and unique difference? This is a great question for your faculty and staff, uh, for your parents and leadership team. Next question, what is your value proposition and competitive advantage? This basically says that when parents are making decisions about choosing a Catholic school, they factor in this value proposition. There's tuition, there's location, there's outcomes, there's academics, there's community calculations. What is the value of our involvement in this school? What is that value proposition? And what do you offer in terms of your value, in terms of what you deliver, right? What's your delivery in terms of value to that student and that family? And wow, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent of two Catholic school daughters and my wife and I have made a commitment to these Catholic schools in our parish. And in terms of value proposition, we are so pleased with the value that we get uh, in, the, in our Catholic school. I mean, what they're teaching and the environment our daughters are in is just priceless. And it's, it's a very, very high value for us to invest in our Catholic school, not only with our time, uh, our talents, our wisdom, and also our treasure. So there's a value proposition that is calculated with parents as they select your school to enroll. Next question here is, how can you tell this story with appealing images, words, and content? And so uh, this is a good exercise for your marketing team or your marketing committee. Uh, what is appealing? 
What are some good images? Uh, what are some words and context that we can use? In terms of images, I'm working with a, a Catholic school here in the Diocese of Lake Charles, Louisiana, right next to us in Lafayette. And they just hired a uh, photographer, professional photographer, to spend two days at school and to take a series of uh, professional digital pictures. And this person walked around the school over two days and captured a variety. I think they're they're getting about... 500 or more pictures in their file that they can use digitally for all these marketing pieces. It's a very wise investment to hire a professional photographer uh, that can really give you some wonderful pictures and images for these, these content areas and your brochures and your website. Uh, that's a really good investment. Next question here is, what is your compelling call to action? If you're going to get from just marketing messages to enrollment, you've got to have a call to action. You know, come to a work, come, come to a tour, come to an open house, come visit the campus, come for a day, come through, uh, you know, walk about Wednesdays, whatever the call to action is in your messaging, you really need to make that known. Okay, so it's not just how great our school is, but we have an open house, uh, schedule a tour, come on Wednesdays, come on a shadow day, uh, you know, come with a friend, come to a ball game. You know, the call to action must be part of your marketing message. Next question is, how can we create raving fans in the community and beyond? So important. This is the most effective, low cost, but high impact strategy that I've ever been a part of. And I've been, in, I've been a part of Catholic school marketing for 25 plus years. The creation of a raving fan marketing committee or marketing plan that goes out in the community and sings your praises is once again priceless. It's low cost, but extremely high in terms of impact. And uh, it's one of my top strategies. And it doesn't cost very much. And people, you know, ask me all the time about, uh, we don't have a big budget, what should I be doing? This is it. I mean, low, low cost in terms of budget, but extremely high impact when you have, uh, you know, raving fans or happy parents singing your praises in the community. It, it, it's the word of mouth gold of marketing that we really need to put into place. And the next question is, how can we create an effective school marketing system and then have that system in place with key metrics? So again, some questions to, to think about here. I also recommend that you create, and I can show you how to do this if you uh, want to email me or get copies of this. I, when I work with Catholic schools on marketing, one of the first things we ask them to do is to put together a series of protocols and standards on the use of your logo. And um, many schools struggle with this because they're just all these different people that are involved in the making of T-shirts or logos or, you know, uniforms or all these swag items. And sometimes we end up with seven or eight different logos out there and we it shows up on a T-shirt at a football game and we wonder where did that logo come from? And so uh, it, th this is something that illustrates exactly the colors and logo choices that can be used throughout the school for any marketing items or swag items or, you know, athletic items or flyers or website posts. These are the items. It, it also shows you uh, what not to do sometimes or not as used anymore. Sometimes we have, you know, we just did a new rebranding, so we have all these new logos and so we're not using you know the old logos anymore so this is something that I think is very important in your marketing plan is to establish a, uh, a list of logo standards all right so how do we get started with these branding statements and I have six of these that I've created and these are actually branding statements that have been used throughout my marketing processes over the years and these can be a good start uh, to begin to articulate in words and phrases what you're about. And from here, once they're established, then we build the marketing plan around them. 
every marketing strategy would be connected to one or more of these statements. For example, we demonstrate academic excellence. We want to be a school of distinction. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that look like? What do we show? What's, what's the images? What's the, what's the words? What's the phrases? What's the pictures? What's the video? What's the content that allows that statement to come to life? It, it comes to life as a statement and then it becomes real in terms of marketing. What's the picture? What's the statement? What's the video? What's the content that illustrates that statement? We're a committed group of faculty staff dedicated to learning, growing, and sharing our Catholic faith. Okay, great statement. But how does it come to life in a Facebook posting? How does it come to life on Flocknode or on other platforms you have or, or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn? How does this come to life in a series of words, phrases, images, pictures, video? Okay. And then we have three more. We're constantly improving our programs, facilities, and create a culture of continuous improvement. Okay. We're a community of selfless service. We permeate our spirit with quality athletics and extracurricular activities, right? So these are the six pillars of your marketing plan. These are the six statements that you've said are what we are about. This is what we are as a Catholic school. And so we then take these six branding statements and we design our marketing plan around telling the story. A very simplistic definition of marketing is telling your story. You have a story. You have a mission. You have a purpose. You have a vision. And these six areas are then how we're going to design the marketing plan. So this is the next month of our marketing strategy. And we want to hit these six areas two, three, four times and assign pictures, words, phrases, and then get those out, right? In a series of postings, strategies, marketing strategies, okay? And we also talk about a marketing toolkit. And I'll show you how to get to that in a moment. This is a workshop that we've been doing for uh, a number of years. We did this at NCEA, the NCEA convention several years ago. And it shows you how to organize your marketing plan around the four seasons of the year. Okay, the four seasons of the year. And the four seasons are, of course, summer, fall, winter, and spring. You can see that here. And I can send this to you if you'd like it. And it, it, it then takes each of the seasons and the three months of those seasons, right? And it gives you some thematic protocols or thematic designs. So let's just take season number one. That's the summertime, June, July, and August. You conduct an evaluation of all your marketing activity and strategy that you just finished for the year. You promote your graduates and their awards. You establish your goals for the coming year, your budget, your needed resources. You have a marketing plan ready to go. You have your logo standards and your website. You have your personnel, your committees, and your raving fan ambassadors, right? So that would be done during the season number one of your four seasons. Then you have your fall, September, October, November. That's a huge time for marketing, right? Start of the year, all the sports, service projects, new families, open house, all of that. You have season three, which is the winter, December, January, February. That's winter, okay? All your mid-year updates, because that's the mid-year. Catholic School Week is in season three. Enrollment activities, open houses, tours, follow-ups, all your enrollment activities, contacting, that's what that is at the bottom, strategic enrollment management, contact map, you're contacting every family of the, as they move through the contact map from inquiry to registration. And then you have your springtime activities. Okay, So important as you plan your marketing efforts. 
We also have a design framework. This this is helpful to create and implement your marketing plan. This is this is what we use in our marketing efforts. If a school wants to uh, move through a marketing plan, we always begin with these four components right at the bottom. So the vision area of this is advancement. The vision statement or the or the overall goal is to implement an effective Catholic school marketing plan. We have at the bottom the four areas to fill in are what are your outcomes and goals? What are your activities and strategies? What are your outputs and measurements? And what are the required and needed resources? So you have your understanding of marketing. You have the elements in place or the components. You have your branding statements in place. You understand the four seasons of the year. And then you're ready to write and complete this design framework. That's what we call this, a design framework. By the way, this can be applied to anything that you're trying to plan for. There's an academic framework. There's an athletic framework. There's a facilities framework. There are all these different frameworks. This just happens to be marketing. And this is what we use as our preferred strategy in terms of planning. Outcomes and goals, activities and strategies, uh, outputs and measurements, and then the required and needed resources. All of that that precedes this will then be placed here in terms of your marketing plan. Excellent strategy, excellent framework uh, moving forward. Last year in Dallas at the NCEA convention, we presented a piece or a workshop on uh, branding and marketing. And this concept of having a toolkit in place uh, caused a major, uh, <laughs> I guess, frenzy of activity in terms of uh, response. And uh, once you have a marketing plan, the important thing is then to, to conceive all of this into what we call a marketing toolkit, which contains a number of strategies, right? The toolkit basically is a number of strategies that are utilized all throughout the four seasons of the year that you can uh, implement, right? So in the toolkit, you have a calendar of marketing activities. You have the school website. You have all your print media. You have your social media and content, all digital contents in there. You have advertising, press releases, targeted direct mail. You have open houses and tours. And you have your raving fan and marketing team, right? So we, we talk about this in terms of a marketing toolkit. And you take out these tools as needed and implement them during the course of your, uh, the, the, the year, the, the four seasons are the, the calendar, the four seasons basically are the way you would execute this over the course of the calendar. And so we have some considerations here that school administration makes a full commitment to the implementation of the marketing plan. There is a clear understanding of the school's mission and vision as number two. And number three is there's an awareness of the current and future landscape of the educational marketplace. We also would like you to create these branding statements that, are, that feature your value proposition and competitive advantage. We also need a marketing committee. And this committee is formed to create and implement the school marketing plan over the course of the four seasons. And then number six, the school marketing plan is executed weekly with a variety of strategies that engage your target audiences. Number seven is there's a school marketing plan that is flexible with established metrics and evaluation tools for each marketing strategy. Number eight, there's an approved set of brand protocols and logo standards that are shared with school personnel. Okay. Number nine says we want to take advantage of word of mouth marketing and creating the mark, the raving fan group, right? The raving fan group to tell your story. And so as we then begin to see how this comes together, this raving fan group begin, becomes so important to really launch a new strategy in terms of marketing. We also don't want you to forget the feedback that you need from parents, faculty, and stakeholders on the impact of your marketing strategy. 
We know that this is a living and breathing document. This is a living and breathing process in terms of what you want to accomplish. If you get analytics and feedback that this marketing strategy is not working, then we might put that aside and create something else. And so I want you to think about that you're not locked in to these strategies every month, every year for the next five years. If you're getting a lot of good feedback on the tour, if you're getting a lot of good feedback on the open house, if you're getting a lot of good feedback on bring a friend day or shadow days, then we keep doing those. Or we might have to evaluate and make some changes. I do want to talk about uh, the tour, which is so important. If you have people signing up on your website and they schedule a tour, you've really got to do a, a good job on making the tour a very special and unique experience. We have had parents when we do our evaluation on uh, what, what made you decide to select our school for your child. The tour is often cited as the difference maker. Okay, so you have a very unique opportunity to get them on campus and spend, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour uh, making them feel special and giving them a sense of your unique culture and the, the very special nature of your school. And many parents, you know, they, they get an emotion. There's an emotional response to what happens on the tour. They want to know that this is a special place, that your child will be taken care of, your child will be loved when they're here, that this is a place that is uh, secure and safe. They're going to get academic excellence, religious formation. They're going to be around caring and loving adults. They're going to get, uh, you know, a, a liturgical experience. They're going to get adoration. They're going to be nurtured and cared for during their life at our school. It really becomes a special experience when we start organizing the tour and make the tour personalized. If you can get some information uh, on the family, we want to get information on the family before the tour so we can begin to address their needs. If they're an athletic family, we want to address athletics. If, they, if they're a, a speech and debate family, we want to address that. Uh, if they're interested in drama and productions, we want to address that. If they have a particular uh, subject area like math and science, we want to address that or the arts. Th this tour is so important and we need to convert these tours into registration. So I want you to, to spend uh, a considerable amount of time making the tour a very special experience and the open house. Okay, the open house and the tour need to be personalized, they need to be special, they need to be uh, unique, and they need to really uh, demonstrate your love for your students and, and for your families. And so invite other families to join you. Invite uh, faculty and staff. In fact, uh, let me say a few things about faculty and staff. The faculty and staff of your school are the greatest marketers for your school than anybody else. And they can make it or break it by their involvement, their engagement, and their, uh, and their discussions are the way they speak about your school, not only inside the building, but outside the building. The faculty and staff are the first line of raving fans. And here's what I say to faculty and staff. We understand that there are issues that arise in our school, something you may have a, a concern about or something you want to improve, uh, but please don't take that complaint outside the building. You know, bring it to our leadership, bring it to our staff, bring it to our uh, committees, bring it to other faculty members, and let's become part of the solution. Because we don't want those complaints and that negativity to hurt us in the community. These are real issues that need to be addressed internally. And let's do that so that it doesn't hurt us on the enrollment side. Because again, enrollment is everything and everything is enrollment. 
So we really need to begin as this as an internal process. As I say to my, uh, my faculty and staff in workshops, we work from the inside out. Marketing begins on the inside and then works its way outside into the neighborhood, into the community, into the diocese and beyond. So if there are issues that need to be resolved in terms of academics or curriculum or facilities or athletics, whatever those issues are, let's be mature enough to deal with them inside the building so they don't hurt us outside the building. And so begin with faculty and staff. They are the first raving fans. And they're on the tour, they're writing letters, they're making contacts, they're engaged heavily in the marketing process, testimonials, videos, faculty and staff singing our praises. That extends then to our parents, that extends to our parishioners, our family, our friends, our alumni, the business community, and the wider diocesan community. We want to have raving fans that are singing our praises. All right, so these are the action items moving forward as we begin to think about putting this in place. Hopefully you've gotten a lot of good ideas so far. <laughs> you know, I could uh, probably preach and teach on this for another three or four hours, but uh, if you're having some uh, questions or have some ideas about this, you can certainly email us and I will get to some questions in a moment that are coming through uh, from our assembled group here. So marketing action items are understand the target market uh, and your educational market and the groups you want to uh, share your messaging with. Uh, that could be uh, preschool parents, middle school parents, uh, the community, the parish, who are the groups that you want to send your message to. Uh, and also I want to say a, a, a little bit about uh, going beyond social media. I know it's in the title of this Zoomcast, but our marketing strategy is not just heavily reliant on social media. We love social media. It's in the marketing toolkit, but it's not the heavy or the most reliant we we're going to have uh, on social media as a marketing strategy. We must understand that there are more effective strategies to telling your story than social media. It is a toolkit strategy, but be very careful on the percentage of time that you spend on social media in terms of the target group and the impact it makes. It may, be, it may sound great to, to have a social media campaign, but is that your targeted group? You know, is that getting, it is, is that getting your message to the right people at the right time with the right, right words and phrases? So put social media into its proper context. It's a tool in the toolbox, but be very careful on the amount of time you spend and the analytics in terms of impact, right? Impact is what we want on marketing strategies. So understand your target market and the groups you're trying to target to. Uh, create your marketing and logo standards. Secure your branding message statements, the five or six of those that you wanna build your plan upon. Number four, complete your marketing plan around the four seasons of the year, and then begin to execute your marketing strategy and the calendar around the four seasons of the year and around the, the monthly strategy, and then certainly your weekly strategy. All right. Okay, so we always in these sessions uh, reserve a certain amount of time for uh, sharing questions and responses. And we do have some questions that came through in the chat, and I want to share those with you. Uh, this will help you to uh, address some of your questions and some of the things we hear about in terms of marketing. So let's begin with some questions, and I will answer them as part of this share time for the next five or 10 minutes. Question number one, at our school, we have a small budget for marketing. What is the best use of our marketing dollars? Once again, we have a small budget for marketing at our Catholic school. What is the best use of our marketing dollars? Well, this is an excellent question and um, it really speaks to an investment in marketing and 
we do know that you need to have a marketing budget and you need to have a marketing budget for the resources that you need to create uh, to put in the toolkit. So you need some resources around a website, uh, materials, professionally printed materials, uh, the cost of conducting your events and open houses. You know, you need, you need, you know, five, 10, 15, $20,000 in a marketing budget that can be returned, right? The return on your investment is what? Enrollment, right? The return on your inv investment is did that marketing strategy turn into good messaging and into five or 10 or 20 or 25 new families in terms of enrollment. And so you want to be testing these strategies. So what's the best use? Well, I've, I've, I really do have uh, three or four uh, good uses of your marketing dollars. First of all is to have uh, a good website. Invest your marketing dollars in a website for your school that has a very strong emphasis on marketing, right? There's a button, there's a menu, not hidden somewhere, there's a menu on enrollment or admissions or the open house or the tours or schedule your tour today. When I look at websites, and I'm scanning websites for Catholic schools all the time, when I know that there's an emphasis on marketing or that they get marketing, they put a, a button or a menu or something very specific on the top of their website prominently that is attracting new families. It's not buried somewhere in five, six, seven clicks. You know, schedule your tour today. Come to the open house. Uh, join us in our mission. Enroll today, right? And, and enrollment is all year long. I get this question a lot. Should we just do enrollment, uh, you know, for two months of the year? No, enrollment, year-round enrollment, year-round enrollment. We need students. We need enrollment growth. We're accepting families all year long, okay? So a good website is strategy number one. Uh, meet the teachers, uh, videos, schedule a tour, all available on the school website. Second strategy here uh, in terms of budget, invest in a, in a professionally set uh, of materials, right? A pocket folder, uh, a handout, uh, professionally printed enrollment and admissions materials. It creates the wow factor. They get it on the tour. They get it at the open house. Wow, this is impressive. It shows that you've made an investment in your marketing efforts. It's not copied on the machine. It's not 25 years old. It's not riddled with mistakes. It is professionally done. And this is a wonderful strategy for your marketing committee. You know, or someone in your school community or your parish community that is a marketing professional. They can work on the hour. They can work on contract. They can work uh, as a volunteer and a number of different arrangements, but they deliver to you a set of marketing strategies and their expertise, okay? If they're a parent or an alum or a parishioner, they might donate their services to the school. So number one, good website. Number two, a professional set of, of handouts and materials. Number three, invest in social media campaigns. If you're having difficulty uh, getting people to like or to uh, see or to click on your Facebook uh, listings or your Facebook postings or Twitter or Instagram or whatever it may be, your platforms, you may want to consider boosting this or targeting groups that are in your population or in your zip code. You know, this is another area where an expert in marketing can help you to target your social media messages. So you might want to spend some advertising dollars on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever these platforms are to get your message, not only to, to more people, but also to the right people, the right message to the right people at the right time. Okay, the right message to the right people at the right time. Okay, notice right, 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 <laughs> and uh, and that's a that's a good uh, investment. And then four, 
Uh, if you do nothing else from this, begin to put together your raving fan committee. Your raving fan marketing committee starts with five, goes to 10, goes to 20, goes to 30, goes to 40, goes to 50. Begin with, you know, three faculty and staff members, uh, 10 parents, you know, alumni, friends, businesses, you have them, okay? You bring them together and there's a specific training for them. And the goal of this group is to get out in the community and sing your praises. So we've got to train them on what's great about your school. What do we talk about? What do we write about? What do we talk about at the ball game? What do we talk about at the grocery store? What do we talk about at Thanksgiving dinner, which is coming up at Christmas dinner, right? Oh, I love my school. Here's why. We love our school. One school that I worked with in Texas created a whole campaign around we love our school. It's the We Love Our School Raving Fan Marketing Plan. Okay, you can steal that. We Love Our School Raving Fan Marketing Plan. Right? We love our school. And here's why. My daughter is thriving. My son is thriving. They're getting wonderful academic education. Their religious education. Going to church. They're in a wonderful community of people. Right? We love the school academically, spiritually, Culturally, socially, we love our school. So the We Love Our School marketing plan, uh, raving fan marketing plan, certainly is a, is a small budget item that has high impact. Okay, so those are four uh, small budget marketing strategies. And then finally, uh, second question, how can I get my face, my, my faculty and staff rather, more engaged in marketing? Okay. How can I get my faculty and staff more engaged in marketing? Well, I think they need some in-servicing. They need to know what marketing is. They need to know their role in marketing. They need to join the marketing committee. They need to be part of the tours and open houses, videos, all of that. They're not exempt, okay? Faculty and staff are not exempt from the marketing plan. We need them involved in that. Okay, great questions. Thank you all so much. Hopefully that answered some of your questions as we uh, begin to wrap things up here. Wow, we're coming up on uh, the, the end of our one hour session. And uh, it's been great so far. Thank you for the questions. And hopefully you have a good start on your marketing plan and how to implement that. If you have any questions, uh, certainly let us know. So I want to uh, share with you our December session. And this is going to be Thursday, December 14th. We have a special guest with us. And this is Angela Scheffler from Our Lady of Fatima School in Lafayette, Louisiana. She's their advancement director. And I thought we'd spend an hour with some questions and answers with Angela in terms of how they uh, conduct their advancement processes at Our Lady of Fatima. This is a uh, Catholic school that is thriving. And they have a number of very well-established uh, systems in place, uh, marketing, enrollment, events, alumni, foundation, that I just think the world of them. And I want to have Angela kind of talk to us about uh, some of the best practices that she's been working on and how, how that is organized during the course of a, an academic year. So December 14th, mark your calendar at 11 a.m. Central Time. We'll have a Q&A with uh, Advancement Director Angela Scheffler. And then in January, we're going to have uh, a session on advancement and what that means in terms of organizing advancement around what we call the, the four pillars of Catholic school advancement. So that should be a good one in terms of your advancement plan. All right. Well, a lot of people do ask us about the services we provide at Catholic Vitality 360. And uh, how do we get in touch with you all if we need something or we'd like you to partner with our Catholic school and parish? Well, it's very simple. We offer a variety of partnership services from uh, assessment to visioning to enrollment to marketing to capital campaigns to annual giving to uh, leadership coaching. All of that is part of our uh, variety of, of, of menu, a menu of services that we provide. And, and, you know, we do this every day of the week. This is, this is the 
other part of our ministry, we consider this a ministry to, to work with dioceses and parishes and schools on these vitality strategies. So it's very simple to uh, get in touch with us. We often do an initial consultation. We like to come on site and visit your school at no cost to the school. We like to visit with leaders. We can schedule a workshop or we can engage in a partnership that might be over several months or in some cases, the course of a, of a year and beyond. And, and really, you know, we're, we're here to, to advance and to move you forward. Sometimes you need a little bit of help to get there. You need some proven strategies. You need some experience and expertise and objectivity to just take you to that place that is not only what to do, but also what not to do. And so this is a part of our ministry at Catholic Vitality 360, and we'd love to share that with you. So just get in touch with us, and we'll be happy to discuss the details. Okay, so what we always say in closing is to uh, go forth in faith as we work on the mission and ministry of the Catholic Church. So we say to bring Jesus Christ to the center of your life, to build good daily habits as a growth process, to surround yourself with good people, to do what you say and build trust, to implement a bold vision and a culture of vitality. And let's not forget the three Ps, which are uh, prayer, <laughs> patience, and persistence, the three things we need along the journey in the work of Catholic school and parish advancement. All right. So once again, thank you for being with us. Thank you for all those that make this broadcast possible to Allison and to Katie and to the team at Catholic Vitality 360. Thank you so much for all your support and, and wonderful gifts and talents. And we'd like to close today with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for all those gathered here, for those who are with us, for those who are gathered here in the spirit of growth and improvement. We would ask you to bless us as we continue along the journey of building the kingdom of God through our parishes, schools, and churches, and that we enter this season of thanksgiving with a grateful heart, a heart that is open to your gifts, a, ho a heart that is open to accepting others, a heart that is open to growth and improvement, and really seeing those who are joining this effort and really becoming a collaborative community. We ask us you to bless us in recharging during this holiday season, recharging for the effort that we must continue to bring those in our community closer to Christ. And for those we serve and for the work that we do in this ministry, we pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Please uh, stay in touch with us and us emails. You can go to our website and check things out with blogs and videos and our YouTube channel. We thank you for being here and have a great evening. Have a great morning. Have a great day and God bless. Thank you so much.